<laughs> now that was definitely a thing. Um, uh, what were your thoughts when that was accidentally revealed? What was it accidentally revealed? She actually personally said it on on the uh, PBS. Was it P NPR? It was an NPR interview NPR, about land management. Mm -hmm. And then I think the detectives on Twitter uh -huh. pieced together what that meant. And what she kind of laughs about it. Rumor has it she bought a house in um, Beverly Hills for $16 million or something, I would, I would have better ways to spend my money mm. than to buy a house in Beverly Hills, that's for sure. <laughs> but you know how most of those big stadium preachers are, they like those gold commodes and things like that, so <laughs> hey, maybe she's in the group. Maybe. <laughs> you know, but I, you know, I, I wouldn't put it past her. Mm. You know? Do you feel like talking about the uh, makes you worry that you might ever get not get ba asked back for another All Stars, or is that even something in your mind? For the fans, the fans would like me back, but you have your goddamn producers. You either love the producers or you hate the producers, mm. and apparently the producers hate me. Oh, <laughs> that's what I can. I think, presumably, I don't know what to say. If they ask me back, sure, I'll walk on to walk off. You know, <laughs> 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 I mean, but. You know, just for the fans, but do I want the pressure? And I applaud Angina for her, you know, exiting as well, and she can see what the pressure is. You know, it's not it's not a cakewalk being on the show. No, I mean, definitely going back under the spotlight, uh, especially with the, the super scrutiny that comes with being on the show now, mm -hmm. it's definitely a different game. I always thought it, I would love to see what you would bring now. Mm -hmm. How would you approach it differently? You know, I wouldn't do anything different. I'll walk on, do, do what I do, and that's it. I mean, that's all I can really do is just right. honestly be myself. Um, and if they don't like it, well, too bad. I'll wrap up a ton of catchphrases, hopefully, but it all depends on the editing, correct? <laughs> that's true, you that know? is true. And luckily, they've always made me sort of the underdog that's a fan favorite, and that's a fact. But here in the United States of America, people don't like to focus on the facts. Mm, They're afraid ain't of facts. The truth. The, yes. the shade. <laughs> That's Correct. Right. It can't be shade if it's totally true. And <laughs> last summer when I worked in Provincetown, you know, there's no disclaimers in life. And I would do the show and my show, and I, I tie in political things, statements it, into each song, and I talk about each song, and I go into each one. And then present them that way. But like last year, for example, I lead them through a story and then I have them close their eyes and they'll sit and you hear, you know, or they will be, and then I say, oh, don't worry, that was a perpetrator and I was able to get them. You know, that stands with the NRA and all the mm -hmm. gun and yeah. how we have all this, you know, massacres going on. What do you think is the best thing that people can do to try to make changes? Is it small changes every day? Is it even just looking at ingredients list for the things that are killing our forests? What do you think? Well, I think first of all is, is to wake up and be honest with ourselves and uh, be honest with others and for sure to wear your mask when you go out in public. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only way we're gonna stop this. And please stay away from all the conspiracy theories. I'm up to here with that. Uh -huh. Which ones are really bothering you the most? Oh, there's so many. I there can't are. even get started. Just go down that rabbit hole and see what can happen. Open up another door to a room. <laughs> yeah, that's you know? right. And the, the the legitimacy by having our president go behind some of these theories is just incredible. Mm -hmm. Hopefully by the time you see this, he'll be gone. And if you're not, you can imagine we'll all be shedding a tear. Mm -hmm. Shedding a big tear. Well, like, for example, find out what's going on around the rest of the world. What's going on in the Congo, you know, for our cell phones and everything. They're extracting minerals, having a mass genocides in the condos, Congos, which there's two Congos in Africa. One of them is the one where Miss Ellen supports, you know, those uh, gorillas uh -huh. in the mist. Did you ever right. see that movie, Gorillas oh, yes, in the Mist? Yes, I did. Sigourney Weaver. I loved it. Uh huh. Spoiler alert, and the blood's trickling down her finger. <laughs> right. Oh my God. <laughs> On top of the photo of Digit. Was it Digit? Yes, poor Digit. Poor Digit. Mm. Oh my goodness. Tammy, people should be following you for your uh, updates and advice at. at Planet Tammy? Planet Tammy on Instagram, my stories, I'm always dispensing advice, not advice, but you know, truth, mm -hmm. tr real news, so to speak. Yeah. I have some friends that actually work in the Indigenous Bureau of Affairs and they send me information under the table or whatever so that I can share with everybody else. That is and great. I have a lot of fans that tell me like what's going on in Thailand. It's important that we know what's going on. And the problem, what in this country, you know, in the United States of America, United States of America, because the whole continent is America, 
and we forget that here. We just think we're the only ones, you know? And if you look around, it does look like a second world country to me. Mm -hmm. Our internet is owned by a monopoly, or three monopoly sources, and we don't get anything. What is that, Eric, he ruins everything, that show, Eric ruins everything? Oh yeah, uh-huh. He gives you a lot of wonderful information. But it's important to stay tuned and know what's going on. Yeah. You know, globally, not just, you know, what Fox News or, or CNN or NBC or whatever they're saying, that's not always the truth. Right, it's you know? important to really or, look out. Or they just focus, they're not focusing on climate change. You know, climate change is very important. And it's happening. It is happening <laughs> and it's, all the we're time. We're getting to the danger zone. We're already in the danger zone. We already zone. are. And what about nuclear weapons? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's that's a big major issue as well. And we're not we're not concerned. You know, at any good God given time, it could just detonate. That's very true, you know? Tammy. And Fukushima is still over there pumping that stuff out in the water. Yes. You know what I mean? There's just so much going on. It's important for us all to be queens with a cause like Miss Tammy Brown. Don't you agree? Right. I agree. Yes. <laughs> now make sure you're following Tammy at Planet Tammy and make sure you're following us at Hey Queen TV. That's on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. Black People Meet, Christian Mingle, J Date, and all the rest. Christian Mingle, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that one we've added this season just to have a little fun. I like it. Holy mackerel. <laughs> All right, Tammy, now it's time to get into it. Get into it. Get into it. There's a couple things we got to get into. You mentioned it a little bit, but your album, Schubert. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the making of Schubert like? And first of all, look at that, Tammy. Look at that. This Gorgeous. look is a look that I can really get into for you. What was the inspiration for the album and also the album art? Well, the, the album was, um, the album was a, about seven years ago, I discovered, uh, well, I was, I was introduced to a mandolier, and then a mandolier is what inspired the album, and my creative direct, creative friend, Rodrigo Berroso, who we've been, writing, we've been writing for years, and we're currently writing right now for the holiday album and things we're working on right now, an EP for the holidays, and a show, actually. Mm. Ooh, under wraps. Uh -huh. But actually, this afternoon, I'll be going into the studio to work on a new song for that. But he had this idea that, um, let's do something more over the top. So that's where, like, my rhymes are the crime, and they are lighter than air, so love me, mm, if you dare. Sort of that kind of, and maybe with an accent. And it was, the hint of that was starting with Porta Potty Prostitute and yeah. stuff like that. You know, he's getting it on like Cunanan on stairs. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know. I love that a mandolier feeling. Now that I put that together, it is very that. Now, for the children at home who don't know who a mandolier is, can you educate them? A mandolier is an, is an artist uh, from the 70s, and she was actually the, the muse of, oh my gosh, what was his name with the curly mustache? And, what's Dolly? It? Dolly. Mm. She was Dolly's muse and a model, and then she crossed over with these albums, and they, they charted in the disco scene and Euro, Euro disco. And she was huge with that. And it was, they're fun songs like Queen of Chinatown and um, Lover, Lover, Love Me and some Enigma and so many more. And they were just very inspiring to me and fun. And also there was Lucia Mendes from Mexico. Mm -hmm. She's one of the queens of soap operas. Ah. She, she also was inspiring for that album as well. Also Dulce. Ah. A lot of 80s influence, but it, that album, and then Pierce reached out to me, Pierce Raleigh, and said, oh, I would like to make some music with you, so I sampled what he had to offer, and we started to write in some lyrics and stuff like that. When you're recording, is it a long process, or do you do one take? Like, what's your, what's your creative process in the studio? I mean, it varies from time to time um, how that works. It's not a one take, that's for sure. Uh -huh. you know, especially, I'm so naive about my voice and how it sounds. It's so like, oh God, really, is that what that sounds like? <laughs> you know? But people seem to like my voice. They, they, they want more Ashmere. Mm -hmm. Right, AMSR, right? Oh, ASMR, yeah. AMSR, not ASMR, whatever. Yeah. Uh, people, I've never heard it referred to as ASMR, but I like it, Tammy. <laughs> people really like that. They're like, hey, can you please keep talking? We play your videos over and over and over. So I'm like, okay, well, that's nice. As long as you don't fall asleep while you're driving. Right. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> that did happen. Really? Mm -hmm. I had a, a friend driving me around here in LA. And he was just falling asleep when we were in traffic. I'm like, what's going on there? Oh, you put me to sleep. Well, Okay, then I need to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That voice is too soothing. <laughs> yeah, Lord have mercy. Now, have you ever done some uh, any real ASMR videos where you speak very softly and mm -mm. crinkle things and touch stuff? 
I don't know about that crinkling business, but um, I, I just talk sometimes, and I'll just talk on purpose on there, and you know, just about gibberish or whatever, it, you know, and that that calms them down. I've been getting a lot of messages though, nonstop from my stories that thank you so much. You're helping me through a hard time. You're helping me through COVID. You've been helping me out a lot of depression. People that are depressed. I'm not a counselor, but it's nice to know that I've been able to uplift people. Yeah, I mean, and you even send me a little song uh, when I when after a lady read past you send me a little song of support and of love, and I appreciated that. Of course, of course, I was you know friends with Lady Red, and I had so much fun coming on the shows, and Lady Red and I. We're in Long Beach together, yeah. so so many wonderful stories. So many good ones. We'll spend. We'll have a little moment about Lady Red later, because I know you have a you know you had a long and close relationship with our beautiful angel. Um, now, Tammy, you have a show on uh, Hey Queen. We filmed it long ago, <laughs> and it sort of fell into the vault. But I I found the footage, and I said this cannot stay in the vault. And I've been putting them together and putting them out. It's Tammy Brown, mm -hmm. a delightful little trippy moment with Tammy with a lot of visuals. And you mm -hmm. talk about old Hollywood. You talk about, of course, your all the different causes. Um, we had fun doing that. Yes, we did. And thank you all so much for having me come in and do this, you know? It worked that out with the perfect timing because I discovered it right before we all went into quarantine. Mm -hmm. So I was able to go back and work on it and give a little new content, little Tammy content to brighten the world during it. And you guys can watch it right here on Hey Queen TV. And you released one, correct? Yeah, two yes. of them. Two, okay, Old nice. Hollywood and then there's one more. Nice. I hope that when I did the indigenous one, I just need to make sure that I, I said, it, it, I think it's Prince Philip, I think. I make sure I said his name right because I get so I'm dyslexic and I get so crazy and whoa, where am I at with that? Sometimes to say the wrong name. You know? Well, we all understand that. Now, one name that we can't forget is the Browns. Tammy, mm -hmm. your show that you started on Instagram, right? Correct. Now has been picked up by Out TV. Congratulations! So tell me about the, the the start of the Browns. How did that idea come to you? What was the making of it like? And how did it get where it is now? Well, that was the uh, John Mark, who plays my son in the Browns. And, and him and I are both producers of the show. He's the director and plays my son. And it's, you know, my name. He had been reaching out to me and if, if I wanted to work with him. So, and he said, well, let's create a little series on Instagram. And I said, okay. And then he sent me a script over. It took a little while, you know, I kind of wanted to feel him out first and sure he was legit. And then he sent me a script and I said, oh, this is right up my alley. Cause you know, I've been making those independent films, those little ones I have on my YouTube channel yeah. and all that, which I have quite a few of those. You have a catalog <laughs> of delights, please. Everybody <laughs> needs to go check that out. I really enjoyed making those little films. Um, but anyhow, and I have some more, you know, up the sleeve here. Uh, <laughs> But he, he sent me the script and I said, you know, I can do this. This, this is right up my alley, you know, let's, let's do this. And um, I, he asked me who I wanted to, he's always very involved. Like he wants me to involve other queens always. He said, if we do this or that, I have an idea and we'll invite, invite a queen. He asked me who I want. I said, well, of course, Kelly Mantles, mm -hmm. you know, and she comes in and plays my best friend on the Browns and Sheila. And um, then we have Paige, uh, who plays my sister, Ethel. And then we have my father, Roy, and he's just a hoot. And we've, we've um, accumulated some other people along the way, like when we filmed in Vallarta, we met this wonderful gentleman, Don, who was seen, actually, his claim to fame is uh, RuPaul's Drag Race season two, when they brought in the makeover for the senior citizens. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so anyhow, but he comes on and works with me. And it, it's just, it's a lot of fun. Oh, and then John Mark's brother, you know, does the cinematography and everything. So it's, That helps that it's all in the family. It's all in the family. And they're such dolls, John and him. So that show got a great reaction. Correct, yes. Um, and it was great to see you doing even more acting, you know, and also, of course, Kelly Mantle, so talented. Mm -hmm. You really got to do more than just your solo Tammy stuff, which we all enjoy, but you were doing scene work, doing, you mm -hmm. know, really playing this up. Um, what was the process of making that like? Different well, for you? Uh, it was easy, it was fun. It was very simple, very natural, organic. And we don't have to shoot those a lot. It's pretty much go and deliver them and bam. Mm. And that's why I'm wearing the hair because the show was picked up, so I might as well promote with the hair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like when John Mark and I, we set together, like for example, during the COVID-19, we started working because of the AMSR, people wanted that. So he said, well, let's work on something. So we created the Tammy Tales 
which have been quite a hit on Instagram as well. Yeah. And we'll put a break on them right now because we're back in the studios working on these different projects right now. So. So the Browns will be out on Out TV. So if mm -hmm. you're watching us on Out TV, you'll, hopefully you'll be go switch right over to the Browns right after, awesome. and then it'll be on Amazon Prime, right? Amazon Prime to come as well. But it seems like everything that John Mark and I've been working on together has got a green light so far. Hello, children.